Hello, I'm Eric Hanley, an Automation Specialist with es and &E. and in this video segment we are going to work with Studio 5000 Logic Designer to develop and test code for an application. Our application will consist of a mixing tank, two ingredient valves, an agitator, two level switches, and a drain valve. Before we jump into our content, ESNE offers online training through YouTube. Please like and subscribe to the ESNE TV YouTube channel for how to applications, online learning, and other automation content. When developing a new application, it is always helpful to identify the conditions that turn on and off the equipment you plan on controlling. These conditions will help the creation of the code to control your outputs of the PAC system. Once you have the conditions identified, you should work to develop a verbal description of the normal sequence of operations that is intended for your equipment. This doesn't have to be overly descriptive, but getting a general sequence for the proper machine operation will help the flow of your logic. In our application, Solenoid 1 opens until Sensor 1 is on. Then, Solenoid 1 closes. Solenoid 2 will open until Sensor 2 is turned on. Once Sensor 2 is on, Solenoid 2 will close and the motor will turn on and run for 10 seconds. After mixing for 10 seconds, the motor shuts off and Solenoid 3 opens, draining the tank. Sensor 2 and Sensor 1 will turn off as the tank level decreases but we will keep solenoid 3 open for 30 seconds after sensor 1 turns off to ensure all the materials have time to exit the tank. Two other conditions must also be monitored at all times. The system must remain in auto, so if the system is placed into manual, all the equipment will be returned to the initial safe state. Now that we understand our output conditions and have a written sequence, we can start developing our code. Now, let's open Studio 5000 Logic Designer and I have a project that is already created that we will be working with. The program name is Studio 5000 Basics Class, which has a 5069L306 ERMS2 controller set up for DLR. Then, you can see a few local I.O. cards that exist in the controller configuration. Since we are not going to utilize the I.O., we can open the card configuration AOP, select connection, and select the checkbox for inhibit. This is not necessary, but inhibiting the card allows you to make further configuration changes to the modules if necessary, and it is the way to force the controller not to search for that I.O. module. If an I.O. module is added, but it doesn't physically exist, or isn't communicating, and you uninhibit the module, it will have a yellow triangle with an exclamation mark as the indicator that the module is faulted. So inhibited is a yellow circle with a pause symbol, and a faulted yellow triangle is an exclamation mark. Now the configuration is good, so we can select our drop down and go online. When you select go online, it will automatically check for configuration differences between the offline project file and the online controller. If they are not the same, a pop-up window will appear asking if you want to upload, download, or cancel going online. If you know the changes that were made and you need to overwrite the controller, then press download. If not, it is always best practice to select Upload. Starting with version 21 of Studio 5000, the comments, descriptions, and tag names were all stored in the controller, so you do not lose any data by selecting Upload. When downloading, you should ensure that you have the proper project and controller connection. Once you hit the download button, the software will pop up another window that is confirming that you will be downloading and that will break all other communications with the controller and overwrite its memory. Select download again and upon completion it will ask if you want to return to remote run. I'm going to hit no to show you that it stays blue and it is in program mode still. Then we will look at the controller status 
which shows the I.O. is OK, the controller is OK, and we are in program mode. If the I.O. configuration was wrong, the I.O. indicator would turn red and potentially stop the controller. Now, inside the controller under the task folder, the first task is called I.O. task. The task currently doesn't have a program, so instead of creating a new program, we will import a program. We will browse for I.O. program and then select Create. Importing has the ability to create all of the tags in logic for you. This is one major reason why it is best to export and import instead of simply copying and pasting code. You can export and import add-on instructions, routines, programs, and projects. When importing, you can see all the tags, routines, and add-on instructions needed to import the program. If there is an error or existing tags, it will ask if you want to overwrite the tags. Plus, it indicates that with a red triangle on the folder during the import criteria. If you copy and paste, that will require you to manually create everything needed on your own. When you click OK, another window appears allowing you to import everything as pending, accept program edits, or finalize all edits. Pending allows you to verify code without running it. Accept edits tests the code but allows you to stop edits. And finalize fully implements the code into the controller. This is the test environment and I know it's OK so we are going to finalize all the edits. Once the import finished, the I.O. program appears as well as a few other routines of code associated with that program. If you wanted to edit the sequence that the routines are executed, you simply need to move the JSR or jump to subroutine instruction above the logic you want to execute after. Since we are online, you will see that the new rung location will be labeled in a lowercase i and the old location will have lowercase d's. You can accept edits, which will move the letters to uppercase, and that will verify the program for errors. Then you can select Test Accepted Edits, which will add the changes into the controller. When testing, you can still select the Cancel Pending Edits button to quickly remove the code without the need of deleting the rungs individually or adding back the previous logic that was removed. Once you are done testing, you should select the finalize edits to clean up the old rungs and implement the new code. In Studio 5000, you do not have to select the buttons in this pattern, but instead just select finalize edits. This will lose the ability to quickly go back and stop the changes though. Now, the scan sequence will scan the digital inputs first, then analog inputs, analog outputs, and digital outputs last. I have created an extra tag that also prevents the JSR from executing the code for the purpose of webinars and training. We will select the tag and press Control T, which will toggle the tag since it is not being overwritten by any other code. The majority of our code will be done in the main routine. Inside the main routine, I have a JSR jumping to the function block routine called Webinar I.O. We need to add another JSR for the routine called Tank Level. This can be done by copying and pasting the existing JSR or going to Program Control and adding a new JSR instruction. When adding a new JSR, you pass input parameters and return parameters from the routine that is calling the new routine. If you do not want to add parameters, you could just right click on the question marks and select remove parameter from the menu. Once we have the JSR added, we will open up the other two routines to show their logic. Inside the webinar IO routine, I have four OR instructions that allow real IO or a tag to write to a tag. Also shown is the vertical jump wires, which avoid confusion when tracing wires in the editor. Next, we will open the tank level routine that has been done using structured text. Inside the routine, there is a pre-built code snippet for a case statement that is incrementing or decrementing the tank level tag by one 
based on the current state of the tank. Then two if statements ensuring the simulated tank level does not exceed 100% or go below 0%. Returning to the main routine, we will add a rung for the missing logic needed for our solenoid one output. We will right click on rung two and select add rung, which will start a new rung that we can edit while online. Then we will select our favorites tab in the instructions toolbar which shows us the most common ladder editor instructions. But I also have quick keys enabled on this computer, which can be seen at the top of the main routine tab. Quick keys can be enabled by selecting tools, options, ladder editor, and then selecting the checkbox to enable quick key. You can change the quick keys by selecting the configure button if you do not like the default configuration. We will start by reviewing all the conditions as well as the sequence of events we developed. We stated that we must be in auto mode for the sequence to operate so we can select the XIC or examine if closed instruction and change the tag to mode underscore switch. From our sequence, solenoid one will turn on until sensor one turns on. So as long as solenoid three is not on, the motor is not on, and sensor one is not on, then we will turn on solenoid one. This can be done by pressing the F key to add an XIO or examine if open instruction and change the tag to solenoid three output. Then copy and paste that instruction twice and change the tag names to motor status input and sensor one input. Programming multiple instructions in a series creates an AND statement, which means all conditions must be true for that output to be enabled. The last condition that we want to add is the system start push button, which is an XIC instruction. That will add all the conditions necessary to enable solenoid one output. So now we need to add an OTE or output energize instruction to turn on the output. When adding ladder logic, if you do not use a latch and unlatch instruction, then you will want to use a self-latching circuit. A latch instruction holds a tag true until the unlatch is executed, even if the conditions that make the latch true are no longer on. A self-latch circuit uses the output of a rung to keep the rung enabled in the event that an enabling condition is no longer true, but no interlocks are preventing the output from being on. Since we need to use an OTE instruction for solenoid one, we will then add a self latching circuit around the start push button by adding a branch level and another XIC command with the solenoid one output tag. Adding a branch inside a ladder logic creates an OR statement which means if either condition is true, the output will be enabled. Now that we have added the last bit of code needed, we can test our sequence of events to make sure our logic has been implemented properly. We will start by pressing the system start push button. Since the tags are not being written to by any other logic, I can simply press the control T to toggle the Boolean. Following the rest of the sequence, we will simulate sensor one turning on which will move us to the next rung of logic. Now that solenoid two is on, we will continue to fill until sensor two is turned on. After sensor two turns on, the motor will run for 10 seconds, mixing our contents. Once the motor runs for 10 seconds, it will turn off and enable solenoid three output to drain the tank. This is when we will need to toggle sensor two off then sensor one off to simulate the tank is actually draining. We then have a delay timer after sensor one is off to keep solenoid three open. After the delay timer, the solenoid will assume the tank is empty and the tank will return to its original state. The only condition preventing the sequence from cycling again is the system start push button. Now there are many different ways that you could have coded the same cycle, 
but this at least gives you insight into the several variations that you will see when working with Studio 5000 Logix Designer Code. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions or need additional information, please contact your local ES&E account manager or automation specialist.